I think MBAs, there are many kinds of MBAs. Actually, there are many kinds of colleges. One where it's real estate. There's a guy with a lot of real estate and he's just like, I want to monetize this, let's put some features. It's like if you played those games, those SimCity type games, not SimCity, the roller coaster tycoon, you're like, let's put this, let's put this, oh, we need a lab, we'll put the lab also. And then you just monetize it, right? You know, to start with, uh, let's give us a context of who Varun actually is. Uh, we know for a fact that Varun talks a lot about AI, but beyond that, who Varun is? Sure. So I'll give you guys some history. Um, I actually studied computer science in college. So neural networks was, it was in third and fourth year. And I remember I was just like, in the third year, I was like, who the hell is going to use this in the future? But then I remember reading this one book back then, it was sort of like the precursor to Mark Tegmark's, uh, Max Tegmark's Life 3.0, right? So I was like, oh, AI is going to be big someday. Yeah. But, you know, the tech we were learning back then, neural networks, it didn't seem like, you know, something magical was going to come about. So I said, well, you know what, computer science has many divisions. Let me take the most base division. Let me write software, right? So I wrote software uh, for as long as I can remember, right? And we... Um, we sort of built this recruitment platform called Jobspire. We had seen Zomato scaling and we said Zomato is great. Uh, let's let's do something like Zomato but in recruitment. Right. We did that. We scaled to 1,500 recruiters. We had th hundreds of thousands of applicants. And in th that era, 100,000 applicants. So what big. era are we talking about? This is like 2014. 14. 2014, okay. 2014, 2014 mm -hmm. yeah. So in that era, 100K was, at least for us, was big. Right. I was just right out of college, right? So uh, it scaled a bit. Then early 2015, 2016, actually early 2016, we sold it off to a New York-based company called Turn to Tech. They're in the bootcamp space in the US. And, uh, you know, again, I was hunting for my next thing. Then for the next three years, we built software for businesses outside of India, right? All across from India, we ran a traditional agency, not a big one, of, like I would say a mid-sized, small uh, agency. That for three years, then um, then I wanted to start up again. Hmm. So went out, actually in my... I forgot to mention in the previous one, I raised money, right? I was one of the youngest in India to raise money. Today, all 19-year-olds are raising money. That time, no VC would touch a 19-year-old with a pole, right? Um, then we raised um, uh, money again for a company called Scenes. We said, hey, let's let's do communities. Let's build community software, right? And going in, we knew it was ultra risky because in the beginning, we weren't doing B2B. We were like, we'll do B2C. We'll be the next Discord. And it's very hard to build a Discord sitting out of India. Right, so we, we scaled to about 150k users, which we did in months, weeks, right. months. Um, but scaling beyond that, at least scaling outside of India is tough. And monetizing in India for anything related to software, impossible, right? Unless we added gambling to the app or some sort of stock trading, it would have been very difficult. And we were very clear we didn't want to do that. So um, so we, we flipped to B2B. Uh, we saw some success there. We worked with lots of major banks in India. We worked with... Uh, some newspaper companies in India. It was all fun, and then um, and B2B gets becomes a drag yeah. at the end of the day, right? It sort of felt like my old services days. So I saw the new wave of AI coming. So it was, I knew that there was something there, and I wanted to, like I still feel we're very, very early with yeah. AI, right? So I wanted to build the muscle, and I feel like, despite the fact that I studied in college, until you implemented it, like today's True. version of it, it you, you're faffing, right? So. I want to gain some experience, so that's why we sold scenes. We sold it to an academy, uh, so I could focus on, you know, just hacking around with AI, figuring out where the opportunity is. So that's what we've done, and turns out good timing because now the entire startup market is now in complete free fall. Absolutely, it seems like you are, uh, you know, you were building for this particular day or year that we are standing in right now. I think it looks like that, but if you see my history, right, I've shipped like a thousand projects. Thousand is an exaggeration, sorry, maybe like fifty, sixty. Right, um, and I don't ship with any intent. Yeah. Like even with AI, now people are seeing me doing Correct. publicly because I'm all, I'm bigger, right? But I've done this since I was like 21. I'll find an exciting thing, I'll ship it, I'll be like, chalega ya nahi, I'll try it, right? Right. And we've tried like 50 experiments, like 45 have failed, right? But I try it anyway. So that's that's what it is. And I think the minute you have one core skill, you know, at least financially, you're not going to go into ruin. Um, and to be very fair. Like the last two years have not been the greatest for me right? okay. because we tried a very, very lofty experiment. Mm. 
and I took again like the old Jaws Pie days, right? I took some crazy risks, um, and I was always like, I have a backup. But the services agency days were great. Uh, now, like the last couple of months have been great, but there have been periods where it's hard, and that right. is the game. You're saying last two years haven't been great, but uh, you know probably in the last two years you have come to the forefront for a lot of people. Whether it's AVTV, whether it's the the, the whole uh, notion of uh, I am somebody who you can learn a little about AI from. So why are you saying that it the last two years has been difficult for you? I think there are two parts, right? I think people look at fame and the number of views. Obviously, you can monetize views, right? Like we are, we are good at that. But I think the goal for me was, dude. I'll tell you one thing, okay? It should have been, it should have been obvious that I built like a billion-dollar business. I'm a smart guy. Yeah. I've been working very hard for a long time, and I approach it very scientifically, very rationally. Try out ten experiments, double down on whatever works. We wanted scenes to be much bigger. We wanted to be a billion-dollar business, right? Um, so that's why I say that it was a big bet. Like we. We ourselves put in money into the company, right? When we were running the services company, we put everything into things. We're like, let's go all in here. That should have been a much, much bigger outcome. I'm not disappointed. I think everything that happened happened for the best. But I think it should have been a far bigger outcome. And it's okay because the other stuff works, right? right. I feel like people conflate fame and success, financial success. Yeah. Just because you're famous, it doesn't mean you're financially successful. We know how to do both. I know how to convert fame into financial success. But is it Mark Zuckerberg level? Is it Elon Musk level? No. So I feel like my ambitions. Every year, my ambitions got bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't want to sound uh, arrogant or cocky, but that was I wanted to get there. I thought, hey, I have everything to get there, right? Like, but life humbles you, and I feel like building like a few million dollar business. Fine, we know how to do it, right? But we wanted to go much bigger than that. Right. So I feel like that's where I'm coming from. And did you never feel the need of doing? Uh an MBA for that. I know for a fact. I mean, I have seen the video that you have made that probably has millions of views now. As to what you think after doing an MBA, what your careers will be. But have you yourself never thought about it? Probably not in India. I don't need to. Else. Like I think you learn by a thousand paper cuts, right? Like you learn by doing things a million times. Like for example, our AI products now have a million users. Got it in the last eight weeks, yeah. probably ten weeks, right? Uh, some of them are doing extraordinarily well. Some of them are not really monetizing. I don't think an MBA could have taught you that, right? Because it's so new. It's a new field. Uh, nobody has any idea what to expect. An MBA is not going to teach you that these are the like. For example, one of the apps we built, some people in Spain covered it. The like Huffington Post in Spain covered it, and so on and so forth. Nobody could have predicted that. I don't know how to replicate it. It's the result of one of the experiments just going and crazy. And you, right? you don't know whether that replication will work in your context in your country as well or not. Yeah, we don't know. Um, that's the thing. So again, like I keep saying this, right? Uh, I think MBAs. There are many kinds of MBAs. Actually, there are many kinds of colleges. One where it's real estate. There's a guy with a lot of real estate, and he's just like, I want to monetize this. Let's put some teachers. It's like if you played those games, those SimCity type game, not SimCity, the Roller coaster tycoon, you're like, let's put this, let's put this. Oh, we need a lab. We put the lab also, and then you just monetize it, right? There's another like, for example, the IIMs where the alumni matters, right? Where I don't care what they're teaching you, but the people that are there six years later could make you, right. you know, could bring you uh, leads and jobs and whatnot. I feel like I, I don't think I ever needed to do it. Um, I know the the title of this podcast will be something by IIM or <laughs> conversation with IIM or whatever, but I don't think. An MBA per se is going to teach you how to run a business because they're totally different things, right? It's like fake stock market trading versus the real thing. Actually, it's not even close because in the real world, every day you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, essentially, college has to prepare you for everyday unpredictability, and it's hard being an entrepreneur, especially in India, right? Um, nobody can predict things like the markets turning, and then how does that make you feel? And it's like an infinite number of things that can be thrown at you, right? Uh, I feel like nothing prepares you for that, and it's like. Me teaching you how to swim by making you read a book, you can't. You'll, I'll, you'll drown. So I feel that's that. And like for example, no MBA could have predicted that we'd be extraordinarily successful in the last two months on building the AI apps. Right. You couldn't do it, right? Um, so I don't know. I'm not. For me, it wasn't useful. And I think every potential way to run a tech product, I've done. And there are lots of learnings, right? And we'll probably come to those learnings along this. Sure. 
but I don't know if an MBA would be able to encapsulate all that because the world's also changing. Unless your syllabus is changing every six months, it's hard. Let's get to uh, your interest, the current interest that you have, uh, and we are talking about AI. Uh, anything that has, uh, you know, sort of drawn your attention towards, and you saw that for the first time, and you saw, and you thought that probably this is going to be very, very big in the coming future. Dude, uh, I got early access to Dali, okay, uh, which is the image generation tool. And I made a reel about it. Not reel, I was on somebody else's podcast and I was just like, yeah. this is going to take away art and whatnot. And you should see the comments. People are like, you don't know anything. You don't understand creativity, this, that. Where are we now? Tell me. Hmm. Mid journey is so damn good now. Like artists now, artists went from saying this is never going to compete with us to this should be banned. Like choose, no. Either it's not good enough or like if it's not good enough, then why ban it? Yeah. Right. So you have to choose one angle. But I think that um, for me, the minute I saw all of that, I realized, uh, and then I saw ChatGPT, I was like, this is, in fact, GPT-3, the original GPT-3, yeah, yeah. uh, which was available on OpenAI Playground. I was just like, this is good stuff. And uh, this is going to be the future, and it's worth sort of spending the next decade of my life here. Because like I said, right, like, I'm looking for massive outcomes now. Like, the small outcomes are done, for me at least. Small as in, like, double-digit CR. Uh, how to play massive. And that's, that, probably will happen in AI. Oh, in case of industries, like if I, I can ask you this question, which is that one industry that will be most affected if we from tomorrow start implementing processes in AI? I think every industry. Look, uh, communication forms the backbone, backbone of white collar work, right? And you can communicate in multiple ways. You can communicate over text, you can communicate over images, you can communicate with slide decks, you can communicate with video. Where is AI, what is AI coming for? These four, five things, right? And any other form of communication you can invent. Let's say you were communicating Morse code. Well, AI will be able to learn it. And LLM can learn any pattern, yeah, right, in yeah. text. So it's like, um, I don't see why it is not going to dominate content. We already use it in content. Correct. Right? I we think are it's not, pretty much there. Already. Yeah, we are not like, it's not like, oh, ek din na jayega. We actually use it. We don't use chat, vanilla chat GPT, by the way. We have a fine-tuned version of chat GPT that writes scripts in the way Achina writes scripts. So it's like, it's already very personalized to us. So we are not using the vanilla options out on the internet, right? We have, it's got our personality infused already. In six months, I can guarantee you the face. Like we already have done a few videos where some people could tell, some people couldn't, where it's already AI. Yeah. Like you don't know it's AI. Like yeah. which of my videos are AI, you find out. Right. Um, so, Hagen, I think, demonstrated a really good face avatar, a talking head avatar. It's like perfect, near perfect. So, I think every communication industry will. I think digitally, we'll be using AI all throughout, um, which is why I've been so gung ho about distribution. If you don't win distribution now, you don't have any other window. Because once I have the channel, like Justin Bieber can launch his next video and have a song completely made by AI. It doesn't matter, people still listen because it's on Justin Bieber's channel. And Justin Bieber is saying, Mene Dala, he's putting a thappa on it. Uh, I feel if you don't own that, like a lot of people make clips of Overpowered and put it on their channel. It gets like 20, 30 views. But some videos, where a guy will clip something funny between me and Tanmay and it gets a lot of views. And he's like, that gets like 100k views or whatever, 50k views. And nobody's going to subscribe to that channel. Nobody's going to expect overpowered upgrade from that channel. They're going to come to the original overpowered. Yeah. So I think the channel itself matters. Content, it's it's weird. Channel will be fine. Content will be automated. So it, the people who own the channel are just going to become more powerful. So it's going to create wealth inequality. Uh, it's it's going to be, uh, it's going to take over content in my opinion.